I'm a New Yorker myself, and, um, uh, but I'm not from the part of New York that you think of when you think of New York. Normally when you hear New York, you think New York City. I'm actually from the rural western part of New York State, about 250 miles west of New York City. I call it New York country. They got New York City. I'm from New York country. I'm from Hornell, New York, a small town just on the outskirts of a Walmart. <laughs> I'm a real American. Real Americans live close to Walmarts. If not, they hope to one day. <laughs> and if it's a 24-hour Walmart, <laughs> why, why try harder at anything? Because ultimately what we want in this country is we want to live within 10 or 15 minutes of a 24-hour store. Anything we want, all day, all night, because we're Americans. And sometimes we wake up and we need stuff. <laughs> we sit up in our beds, oh gosh, whoo, uh, I'm going to need a garden hose. And I was a little boy, about your age, about your age right there. We used to do something when I was a kid. Now, I don't think you young people actually do this anymore. But when I was growing up, we used to do this thing. I don't know when the last time young people did this. When I was growing up, every day after school, we would go outside and play. <laughs> I swear, I'm not making it up. And we used to play army because our dads had all been in World War II. We wanted to be like our dads. And that was my sound for guns and bombs. Little boys love to make sounds like guns and bombs. They can't do it too much anymore or they're dragged off and put in jail. But when I was growing up, every day after school, you'd hear us in our backyard pretending we were storming the beaches of Normandy. <laughs> I almost passed out on that one. Uh, you, ever, you ever do that? You hold your breath and push too hard. Things just go all sparkly. And don't get up, by the way. I'm fine. <laughs> what a compassionate group of good Christians. He's having a stroke. What should I do? Well, I certainly wouldn't touch the guy. I'll tell you right now. Back off. I don't know if we're covered. It's my age. I'm at that age. I meant that all men get to this age. You ladies, I don't know if you ever get to this age. I'm at the age I'm starting to make noises when I don't want to make noises. I do work around the house. I make two noises. One noise when I do the work. Another noise about a second later. Sounds like I'm thinking about the work that I just did. Ah. <sighs> That's the joke. That's the whole thing. It's the whole joke. There's nothing else to it. Yeah, I got a place. I built a cabin, by the way. I got a cabin uh, out in the woods. I got a couple hundred acres of woodland upon which I built a log cabin from a kit. Because that's how you build a log cabin. You know that, don't you? The days of chopping down your own trees and holding them together with beaver dung are over. If you want a log cabin, where would you go? Where would you go? Where would you go? Where would you go? No, you don't go to Walmart. <laughs> I went to Costco. There we go. I found the level of the room. Now, there's a store. Man, that's a big, you walk through the front door of a Costco, can't see the far wall because it curves over the horizon. <laughs> I'll tell you how big a Costco is. You ever seen an airplane hangar? Giant buildings where they construct enormous airplanes. You can buy those on aisle seven. <laughs> Out where I'm from. Al, where I'm from, there's two kinds of guys. You may have the same two kinds of guys around here. There are guys who go hunting and guys who go hunting. <laughs> now, do you know the difference between hunting and hunting? 
hunting is actually done for the good of the animals. You must kill some deer in the fall for there to be enough food for the rest of the, in the winter. That's hunting. Hunting, a little different. Hunting involves liquor and flashlights. See, that's true. It's true. You ever been on a two-lane county road and you see a sign with a bunch of bullet holes? That's hunting right there. <laughs> My first day in New York City, I saw more people in one block than I would see in my hometown all year. And some people could be very aggressive. You know, that, that, that reputation, that stereotype. New York is very aggressive. An old woman scooted me out of the way on the street. She's trying to get by. She's bent over an elderly old woman. She's a crone. A crone. <laughs> Bony finger pushing. Boy, boy, on your right. I'm on your right, boy. I'm on your right. And what I thought I heard, I've got a knife, boy. I've got a knife. I'm running around. She's got a knife. What kind of a city is this? And do you know what happens? Do you know what happens if you run around New York City and scream someone has a knife? Do you know what happens? Nothing. Nothing happens. The thing, here's what I discovered, is you get to a certain point in your life where you realize probably you, whatever you've done, uh, it's all downhill from here. And what will happen is you start to ask yourself, well, what did I actually accomplish with my life? And what we'll do, because we beat ourselves up, we will choose very successful people who are our same age and we'll compare ourselves to them. For instance, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs was three days older than I am. He was born three days before me. He was born February 18th, 1955. I was born February 21st, 1955. And, and, and when he died, I said to myself, I have 72 hours. <laughs> to try and do something. And the best I could do was write this joke. That was the best I could do. The best I could do.